traitement. This tropical forest here in northeast Congo is home to the pygmies. For nearly a month now, three MSF teams have been roaming the Ubangi River and the forest paths in what has been a veritable human and logistical feat. Their aim is to reach the pygmy communities who, for a short while during the rainy season, live a sedentary lifestyle in hundreds of villages scattered across the forest. The teams want to treat and in so doing eradicate yaws, a long since forgotten disease found amongst isolated populations living in poor hygiene conditions. Excluded from the healthcare system, the pygmies living in northeast Congo are particularly affected by the disease. Yaws, transmitted by skin to skin contact, causes skin lesions and then goes on to affect bones, soft tissue, and joints. There's an easy way to treat and eradicate yours. It takes just a single dose of the antibiotic azithromycin. It is highly effective and extremely well tolerated. It's a drug that has been around for a long time. It's safe and can eradicate the disease in a population that the health services usually find difficult to reach. MSF teams organized the distribution of azithromycin in September, aiming to treat a population of 25,000 people. Teams will return to the villages in a month's time to monitor the success of the treatment and to give the antibiotic to those who weren't there first time round. Malnutrition is still rife in southern Niger. In July, torrential rains destroyed crops and grain reserves. Some days we have nothing to eat. Sometimes all we have is breakfast. And if we manage to find something in the evening, so much the better. If we don't, we just wait. Yesterday I picked wild plants for the children. That's all they had all day. During the rainy season, malaria-transmitting mosquitoes proliferate and malnourished children, already weak, run a higher risk of developing a severe form of malaria. A malnourished child is a child who is unable to fight back. He is weak and has no energy. Without protein, he is vulnerable to everything. MSF treats both pathologies at the same time in its treatment center in the Maradi region. The teams try to break the cycle by conducting vaccination campaigns and distributing mosquito nets and specially formulated foods. This is Dr. Balit's last visit to the hospital in Mulaitivu. He'll soon be leaving Sri Lanka. When MSF decided to provide support to the hospital in 2010, the country was just emerging from a violent conflict and the hospital was barely able to function. In 2011, 5,000 people received medical consultations. In order to ensure the hospital's sustainability in the future, MSF set up a laboratory and installed a water purification system. For the doctors to be able to work properly, there needs to be a reliable and regular water supply. The water needs to be of good quality and meet adequate standards. It also means access to drinking water. In 2009, MSF decided to provide mental health consultations in Menik Farm, a camp for displaced people, to address the needs of patients suffering from trauma caused by the civil war. The project was then transferred to Mulaitivu, where it was available through the hospital or mobile clinics. Last August, MSF's mental health program was handed over to World Vision, an NGO with long-term operational plans for the area, and the hospital is now under Ministry of Health Management. The emergency phase is over, so there is no longer a role for MSF in Sri Lanka. However, the organization stands ready to return to the country if the need arises. Demonstrations in New York, street art in Paris, a flash mob in Geneva, international mobilization in support of the Indian government in its legal battle against Novartis is stepping up. Il
the Swiss pharmaceutical company is contesting part of Indian law on patents. Article 3D of Indian patent law specifies that in order to be able to patent a drug, a company needs to prove that it has a real improved therapeutic effect over any existing drugs. This means that it demonstrates greater success in treating an illness. What is at stake here is what is known as evergreening, a very common practice. This consists in companies continually extending their drug patents by making minor changes or improvements to a drug, but which do not really enhance enhance its therapeutic effect on the illness it is treating. The court case is expected to last several weeks. MSF fears that a victory for Novartis will make access to essential medicines more difficult. Like many other organizations, MSF is totally reliant on affordable generic drugs to carry out its work. For example, 80% of the antiretrovirals that it uses to treat some 170,000 people with HIV-AIDS are manufactured in India.